Hello there, YouTube viewers, Moringa Mutual followers, um, sustainable lifestyle lovers, and YouTubers out there. Um, what I thought I would do was just uh, just do another uh, another video, just following up on my uh, previous video, um, talking about my Arduino multiprocessor system, which regulates my aquaponics setup uh, within my polytunnel. Um, now this is um, initially as a project, um, also to all the Moringa Mutual Trust uh, that I'm conducting. Um, into growing uh, moringa in uh, aquaponics environment um, and also as a sustainable lifestyle um, project with regards to food production within a closed loop system um, inside an eco living space. Um, now as you can see um, from the current shot uh, so we've actually got our multiprocessor um, here um, which has actually got an ethernet shield attached to it um, now the Arduino board that we've got um, is a Arduino Mega uh, 2560 and um, what that's actually doing is uh, it's actually controlling our environment within our polytunnel. Um, now the way that it does this is by uh, taking readings from our various sensors. Um, we've got a humidity and temperature sensor here. Uh, number one uh, and number two humidity and, and temperature sensor here one of these will actually be situated outside to give an outdoor temperature and the other and, and humidity and the other one will be indoors and that will also provide indoor temperature and humidity readings um, likewise we've got our two photosensitive resistors as you can see here one and two and again one of those will be outside the environment and the other one will be inside the environment We've also got some uh, temperature sensors, which will be attached to temperature probes, which are which will be in our uh, tanks, fish tanks, giving us temperature readings for our fish tanks. Um, and uh, we're also going to be attaching a flow sensor to this as well, um, so that if we have any issues with our pumps, which pump the water from the fish tanks into the beds, um, we'll get notified of that, and we can also activate a backup uh, pump. Um, now. Since we did, uh, since I did my last video, um, I have had made some developments. Um, remember, I was talking about the uh, Spark Fun uh, relay kit. Um, now, if you look here, um, we've actually got uh, one of those uh, Spark Fun relays, relay boards. And uh, essentially, how this comes is as a PCB with all the separate components: the, um, the resistors, the transistor, um, the diode which only here, uh, also the LED and a transistor switch and some connections um, and you actually have to put this together yourself but what's so great about this is you can actually run um, 240 AC current uh, through here and use this relay switch to, to break and uh, create your circuit. The last one I used was just a standard relay um, module and it couldn't handle the 13 amp um, current that we actually get uh, in the UK mains. Um, so initially, essentially what will happen with this is it will actually be uh, supplied with a, a power supply from our battery bank once we've set up our solar um, array. Uh, but um, for the time being I've got this attached to the side here just for testing. Um, now if you look, um, if we come down um, this wire, um, what we can see here is a switch box that I've um, developed since we last spoke. Now, essentially all the switch box does um, is it takes a main supply um, from this cable here, uh, which is attached to a main power supply, um, and it feeds it into um, these two plug sockets. Okay? Um, within the box we've also got two of the spark fun relays that I just spoken about, um, which are also which are controlled um, via this wire, um, via our the multi microprocessor. Um, so what the microprocessor does now is it actually uh, detects the temperature within the polytunnel and also the light levels within the polytunnel and activates um, these sockets as and when we need to turn on our heater, which is down here, which is an electric fan heater or when we want to activate, um, for instance, an LED light, as you can see up there. Now, at a later stage, we will actually be incorporating some full LED grow lights um, in order to um, 
maximise the um, the environment's conduciveness to growing plants and photosynthesis, uh, whereby we will actually be um, making sure that our plants get 15 hours a day of uh, direct sunlight. Um, so, so you know, obviously we're getting somewhere now. We're going to be building uh, another one of these um, relay switch boxes here, um, and I'm actually going to be showing you a little bit more detail. Um, I would open this box, however, it has got some live um, electrical parts which are connected to the mains. So I'm not going to do that today, but at some stage, what I will do is if any guys out there on the internet want to find out how to build one of these and how this actually works and how to do the wiring, I'm more, ha more than happy to do another video um, just explaining exactly how all this works. Um, so, you know, if any of you guys need to see the sketch um, for the Arduino or want some more information about how to actually set up their Arduino board, also I'd be happy to do that. Um, if we just come back up to the multiprocessor. Um, set up as you can see here I've actually got two breadboards one on either side um, which are connecting uh, to which are connected our, our resistors our temperature sensors humidity sensors etc etc um, what I'm actually going to be doing is uh, connecting this all to a PCB board which I've actually had um, fabricated and I'm still waiting for that to be delivered uh, but soon I'll be doing that and attaching all my devices to that and that will save me all the space and make it a lot more permanent as I'll be able to solder all my components in. Um, I'll also be um, connecting uh, my sensors to uh, longer wires um, so that I can actually uh, situate them outside this, uh, this wooden box um, so that uh, they're actually giving uh, readings from uh, places in the environment that I want the readings to come from. Um, so yeah, um, let's just have a look around. Um, and you can actually see um, that um, our vegetation is really, really coming on now. So, you know, as you can see, the lettuce are thriving. And my red lettuce are doing really, really well. And they're absolutely gorgeous. I'm already having those in salads. Um, if we go over to our moringa plants, uh, the moringa plants are doing a lot better. Um, now, we did have an initial issue with our nutrients getting into this particular um, bed. Um, whereby we're getting some deficiencies and I think we still have some deficiencies we are still getting yellow leaves and stuff but we are getting a lot better growth um, our moringa is doing better uh, it's not a perfect situation um, but we were using some of this which is Ferion which is chelated uh, iron supplement uh, for marine fish and reef aquaria and I've been adding um, around about a third of a uh, cap load to this system um, every other day um, and also a cap load to my larger system of, which is a 200, li 200 litre system every other day as well and that seems to be uh, doing the trick. So we have, if we have a take a look at our other beds you can also see you know, lettuce here is doing really well. Um, lettuce seems to be really thriving and, it, and lettuce is initially a really good uh, veg uh, vegetable to do because it can live and survive very well in um, immature uh, aquaponic systems which haven't had much time to mature and build up the nutrient levels. Um, come down here, we're also our melon plants are also doing really well, they look happy. And uh, our corn on the cob is still growing and uh, shooting up and looking really happy as well. So uh, yeah, things are doing really well and um, we are actually making a lot of progress. The microclimate is uh, maintained